Joining me this morning is Mr. Manish Tiwari from Chandigarh on the Punjab campaign trail. Mr. Tiwari, I've been watching your, you know, your videos, your campaigning. It's largely as if you are a lone ranger. Are you upset about the fact that your party did not even put you on the star campaigners list? Well, uh, to be very honest with you, Pallavi, I am not. If it would have been the other way around, I would have been pleasantly surprised. Look, uh, the Congress party gave me a ticket uh, to contest from Sri Anandpur Sahib. But uh, it is the Congress workers of Sri Anandpur Sahib who made it possible for me to come to Parliament. So I have a responsibility to those Congress workers, to my constituents, to see that our MLAs get elected and go to the Vidhan Sabha. So therefore, I am doing my duty to the best of my ability. We do 16, 17 meetings every day. And uh, we try our best to ensure uh, that those people who have been nominated by the Indian National Congress as their candidates come to the assembly. When you know, whenever I travel, people do complain about the fact that there's a job problem over here, there's unemployment over here. You think that's going to be the main issue in Punjab when it decides to vote? Is there winds of change going to be about that? <clears throat> Pallavi, uh, the fact is that the real issues of Punjab are completely missing from the campaign. What are the five big issues in Punjab? The first is the three lakh crore debt which is there on Punjab. The second is that the average size of land holding in Punjab is three to five acres, which makes agriculture unsustainable. The third is that the groundwater of Punjab has been dropping by a meter every year for the last 30 years. The fourth is that the biggest industry in Punjab, coming to your question on jobs, is the eyelids exam. Hmm. You know, everybody wants to take the exam and go abroad because there are no uh, employment opportunities out here. And the fifth is that how do you harness the fourth industrial revolution for the future of Punjab? And all these five issues are completely missing from the campaign. All that is happening is gali galoch. Hmm. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah. So, so Manish, um, you know, I, uh, the decision of the Congress Party, I'm going to come back to it again. Despite the fact that you're called Group of 23, you are a part of the Congress Party. The decision of the Congress Party is one to name a Chief Minister because I listened to Captain Amrinder Singh yesterday saying that it was a wrong decision to make. The decision to name a Congress Chief, uh, a Chief Minister face, do you think it was under compulsion, one, so was it required? And second, the Dalit, poor, tag, and that's the reason you've chosen Chennai? <clears throat> well, uh... Pallavi, I don't think it's appropriate during uh, the campaign to second-guess a decision. Uh, this post-mortem can wait uh, till the 20th of October. But let me tell you one thing very clearly. Uh, Punjab is not UP or Bihar. Punjab casts its vote and does not vote its caste. So therefore, these divisions uh, which exist in other states do not exist in Punjab. For example, there is no Hindu-Sikh divide in Punjab. And uh, uh, if there would have been a Hindu-Sikh divide, I wouldn't have been the member of parliament from Sri Anandpur Sahib, where right. the Khalsa was consecrated. Muhammad Sadiq would not have been representing Farid Court, where a large number of very holy sh Sikh shrines are also located. So therefore, this Hindu-Sikh issue is a complete bogey. But unfortunately, because Mr. Jakhad has been raising this issue, that he was denied the chief ministership primarily because he was a Hindu, I think it is high time that uh, the Congress leadership clarifies this misperception because it is creating a lot of confusion among the electorate. And let's not forget the fact that 40% of Punjab is Hindu. But also the fact that then you don't agree with this whole Dalit tag and Dalit CM, Congress party being the only party naming a Dalit CM. So the Dalit credential of Chani, you don't think is something which have been flaunted by the party? Well, Mr. Charanjit Singh Chani is also one of my MLAs, in addition to being the Chief Minister of Punjab. He is a very good human being and uh, he's a very hardworking human being. He has come up from the ground and I think those are credentials enough. As I said that uh, Punjab is a progressive state. And we do not, uh, we cast our vote and we do not vote our caste. Punjab does not think like UP or Bihar. And unfortunately, Delhi has never understood Punjab. Uh, going all the Delhi way. Delhi means the Central Congress leadership also? De Delhi, de de Delhi has never understood Punjab going back to 1947. Mm -hmm. And Delhi still does not un understand Punjab. In fact, uh, what you saw in the form of the farm agitation or what you saw 
earlier for uh, 15 long years uh, when Punjab faced the depredations of terror was primarily because Delhi has never understood either the ethos of Punjab, the milieu of Punjab or the lay of the land. We are a border state and we are very different from the rest of the country. And the Navjot Singh Sidhu factor. Do you think that could have been handled better? Because there was a lot of resistance from the party to make him the PCC chief. They felt that, you know, he rose where he rose because of his proximity to the Gandhi siblings. Well, uh, in the party, uh, decisions uh, get taken. But however, I have always believed and I continue to believe that people who have come from outside the party should not be given organizational positions. And this is not Navjot Sidhu specific. This goes across the board. You know, people who have risen from the ranks of the NSUI Youth Congress, who've spent 40 long years or 50 long years in the service of the party, who know each and every worker in the state, who know the contribution that they have made over the years, are people who should be given uh, apex organizational responsibilities across the country. Unfortunately, when you bring in a person from outside who may be otherwise uh, meritorious in his own right, but does not really know what the track record of different people has been over the years. And in the case of Punjab, where 35,000 Congress workers died between 1983 and 1995. But Rahul Gandhi said that they will see Punjab. And he's a bowler as well as a batsman, so he can wear different hats. Well, in the sense you can wear different hats, but that does not essentially mean that you understand the track record of people who have sacrificed their lives, who have sacrificed their families, who have sacrificed for the unity and integrity of uh, Punjab. You see, as I earlier said, it's a very different state between 1983 and 1995. 35,000 congressmen died upholding the unity and integrity of the country. So therefore, their contribution and the contribution of their kith and kin, the contribution of their families to ensuring that Punjab remains a part of India is something which needs to be understood, internalized by people, you know, who lead uh, the organization at an apex level. Two quick questions before I let you go. One about the Captain Amrinder Singh factor. You've been very open about the fact, the way it was tackled. Today, he's also fighting for a kind of a political relevance. He's angry, he's upset. You think that could be a factor? You still maintain the stand that this is something which could have been handled better? Well, uh, you asked me that why was I excluded from the list of star campaigners? And one of the reasons, in addition, uh, to be a part of the so-called G23 is also my uh, perceived proximity to Captain Amrinder Singh, uh, of which I have made no bones. You see, unlike other people, I do not change my relationships just because a person is in power or out of power. I have spent 40 years in the Congress Party. Even today, I am campaigning for the Congress Party with full vigor and zeal, irrespective of what uh, certain people in the Congress Party might think. But my relationship with Captain Amrinder Singh remains the same before he was Chief Minister, while he was Chief Minister, and after he ceased to be Chief the Minister. Gandhis don't trust you to so, get so, that feeling? So, so, so therefore, uh, uh, so therefore, insofar as Captain Amrinder Singh is concerned, you know, people remain chief ministers, they may not remain chief minister, but he continues to remain a Manish, do you think the state. Gandhis don't trust you? Well, I don't know. That's a question you'll have to ask them whether they trust me or not. Insofar as I am concerned, I am uh, doing what I can as a congressman of 40 years of standing, whose family has shed blood for the unity and integrity of India, whose father sacrificed himself at the altar of Punjab, Punjabi and Punjabiyat. There are certain values which I hold dear and I continue to fight for those values. And last question. You write a lot about foreign policy and I saw one tweet also earlier today on that. Rahul Gandhi stands and talks about China, Pakistan, proximity and all. You think that becomes a particular fodder for the BJP? Do you think some topics are best avoided in terms of political strategy? Well, uh, insofar as China is concerned, we are facing a very, very uh, peculiar situation. India has to stand up to China because China has entered a very, very different uh, phase after the uh, Xi presidency. And therefore, on the question of China, uh, everybody needs to stand as one as long as the border situation uh, continues to be what it is. Yes, China should be discussed in Parliament. I have been a big votary of it. I've just written another piece with yes, regard to that. 
But the fact remains that when you have dissonance, que what are your external enemies, it does not either play out well internally or externally. So you shouldn't be talking about this publicly? I'm not saying that you should not be talking about this publicly, but you should be talking about it responsibly. Thank you very much.